you did an interview after the second album came out and you made some comments about Jews. You said that um, Jews are responsible for the majority of the wickedness in the world. That's it? Was that part correct? And there was oh, some other stuff no, that was a, right there. no, that was a lot longer than that. It was a conversation we were having. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could probably so, so put it so okay, so put it into context for me. Um in what context? Like the well, conversation we were having? Yeah. I don't you have time for that? Sure. I could talk about it. Go for it. Huh? Go for it. If you are the uh, one of the main integral parts of public enemy that actually did the interviews, and there was a research department in the Nation of Islam that was distributing a manuscript, not a manuscript, well, really a manuscript on a book that later came out called The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. And at that time, there was discussions going on um, in the group, um, along with people that was associated with the group. And we was running down who owns the music industry and who owns the production companies and this, that, and the other. So when the, when the interviewer, black man, asks a certain series of questions, uh, I used to travel with suitcases full of books. Hell, I was a minister of information. So I came with 20, 30 books, and we was just kind of going over some of the information in the books. I think I had Henry Ford's book, The International Jew, The Octopus. Uh, I can't remember all of the books that I had, but we had that discussion about who controls the entertainment industry. So out of that conversation, which was an hour and 10 minutes long, someone pulled that out and put it in the forefront. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So if, we, so if, we, if you're talking about world wars, then who was responsible? If you talk about who financed Hitler, who was responsible? If you're talking about the Civil War and you're talking about black people being brought over from Africa to America in the holes of ships, who owned the insurance companies? Who owned the ships? And that's the kind of discussion we were having. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. David Mills made it seem like it was a Jewish conversation. So, yeah. But, but it, was a, it was a bigger story so, involved in it. Oh, it's a lot. It was a lot larger than that. Yeah. But that part comes out and there's an instant backlash over it. Hmm. What, what started to happen within the group when that backlash started? I think it was, a, it was discussions about it, but... We looked at it like, okay, our two-year run is up. We shook shit up. What the fuck, man? It wasn't like people thought it was because we didn't really have interaction like that with white people. So it didn't mean it didn't mean anything. It was like, okay. It wasn't until that information was sent to the Village Voice in New York. Then it exploded. And then now those Jewish groups, ADL and other people, put pressure on Def Jam to figure out how you're gonna handle Public Enemy. Then Public Enemy had to figure out how do you handle Griff. And I'm like, what is it to handle? Our two year reign is up, see you and It wasn't nothing to even talk about. But since Chuck flipped it and I got thrown under the bus, now I gotta go for myself. 50 soldiers that I thought I had didn't have them anymore. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? What do you mean? You talk about Professor Griff, leader of the S1Ws, the same dude that was training people in martial arts and going to prisons and jails and leaving money on the books. Uh, hardcore killers getting out of jail like, yo, whatever you need me to do, Griff. Yeah, I had those kind of dudes at my, waiting on my word. What do you do with that kind of power? Pseudo power. Okay. And now you got the dudes in the group throwing you under the bus? Yeah, if I was kind of reckless with my mouth at that time, yeah, there would have been, there'd have been some, some, some funerals happening, bro, for real. But no, I pulled back, and as I was pulling back, thinking that the group was going to be over anyway after two years, I find out that I was the one getting kicked out of the group. Now, I would heard that Chuck D didn't want you out of the group. Is that true? No, he didn't. Yeah. That's true, he didn't. Mm -mm. So, so the other was, people wanted you out of the group? It was them other, it was them other fucking flunkies. It, the Hank Shockers okay. and the Bill Stephanies and the punk ass Russell Simmons and the rest of them. And by the way, if you're taking 
taking up opposition to what I'm saying, call me. My number is 678-557-2919. Them motherfuckers can get it. For real. How did Lior Cohen, who's, you know, who's Jewish himself, how did he react to it? Yo, Bill Adler, uh, uh, Lior Cohen, um, Ron Scola, Moskowitz, Kara Lewis, all the Jews that I was working with at that time, we had mature adult discussions. It wasn't this childish shit like, give me my ball, I'm going home, nobody's going to play kickball. Because the information that I gave in the interview wasn't from Griff. It was from Jewish scholars. <laughs> I didn't write it. So it's like, wow. Okay. So if Chuck D wanted you in the group and Chuck D was the leader of the group, why weren't you still in the group? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to take the high road and humble myself. That's something Chuck got to search his heart about. You talk about a man that I came up with since four years old. Hmm. That brother know my heart. Like these two gentlemen I'm sitting in front of. I ain't no fucking ruthless, violent dude like that. I came in this motherfucker telling jokes. You understand what I'm saying? That's my natural character. When I read the, when I read the contract, I clicked on my Professor Griff shit like I'm supposed to. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then now I'm doing an interview being very transparent. So, but he has to search his heart. You understand what I'm saying? If those people on the other side of public enemy, not the ones truly out in the street doing the work saving lives, but on the other side of public enemy, didn't have the same idea of the ultimate mission and goal of public enemy, didn't share the vision, then that's a discussion we needed to have. But to throw me under the bus thinking that was going to be all right? No, that wasn't going to be all fucking right. Hell nah. Everyone from fucking Spike Lee to the rest of them, no, that shit ain't going to be all right. What was Flavor Flav's take during this time? He was like, fuck Griff. Hmm. We ain't need the motherfucker anyway. Cause the two that you, was his attitude. The, the two of you never really got along anyways, I guess, right? Never really got along because I'm not smoking drugs with you. I'm not drinking with you. I'm not bagging chicks with you. I'm not, no. Nah. Yeah. Mm -mm. So I guess there was a press conference where they announced that Professor Griff is now no longer in the group. Yeah. Ain't that a bitch? A press conference without me there. Right. Let me tell you something, man. I'm going to be honest with you and very transparent. If I would have showed up at the press conference, I would have rearranged that motherfucking furniture in that place. Me and about 20 dudes. But I'm a humble dude. <laughs>